welcome back guys for some good vibes and video games. Oh, I'm just warning you right now, I might be a little low energy today. I think I need another quick injection of coffee. I literally just got done recording a Q&A for Starfield. A lot of people had a lot of questions and I think I was standing up during the entirety of that video, but I could not wait to jump back in. Today though, I think we are going to change it up a little bit. So if you guys have seen my past couple episodes, you probably remember that I have been doing one of the Freestar Collective missions. We came across a character named Maya who has something to do with a sub faction in the game that I don't actually know if we can join or not, but they're called the first. So she's involved with an entity called the first and we had to hunt her down because she did some no, no stuff. We ran around a lot from point A to point B talking to a lot of characters, trying to find out as much information about this person as possible, but it all paid off because we finally found her and we had to take her out. And that was actually such a fun, challenge. I died a lot during that cave run. I learned a lot about my character and the guns that I like to use, but overall it was so much fun and it was really rewarding at the end because it felt like I had completed something. But then there's this second half of this overall faction mission where there's still another person by the name of Marco that we still have to hunt down separately. But instead of going forward and continuing with the Freestar Collective quest line, I kind of want to change it up and pivot a little bit. I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to dip my toes into the Vanguard quest line. If I remember correctly, it was a faction mission that I received pretty early on in the game. It has something to do with the United Colonies, and I think that that is the faction that is maybe more antagonistic to the Freestar Collective. I'm also curious whether or not if we get deep enough into any of the faction quest lines going forward, I'm wondering if it's ever gonna get to a point where if we decide to go with one over the other, every other quest line for the other faction that we didn't choose is going to be completely locked to us. So why I wanna try the Vanguard today is because I want to experience the missions that they have to offer so that I can actually see, like maybe I'll end up liking them over the free stars. I don't know, but I don't like to limit myself to really anything, especially early on in the game. So once again, thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I really hope you are enjoying this playthrough so far. All right, without further ado, let's jump back in. Yeah, so like I said, we're gonna try doing the Vanguard quest line. And I think to start that, we gotta do Supra et Ultra. Step one of joining the Vanguard, register at one of the terminals in the orientation hall inside Mast, which will be nice because it's been a while since I've been to New Atlantis. Maybe we can stop by the lodge. I kind of want to pick up Vasco and change Sarah out with him. I love Sarah, but she kind of too judgmental for me. I just want to shoot things and steal stuff without being made to feel bad, okay? All right, let's set a course. Oh, we're right here. Look at that. Hey, let me know if we're going to head into the well so I can watch your back. The well, I don't really know what you're talking about right now, but sh yeah, I, I will let you know. <laughs> Bosco, Greeting hey. Your service, Captain. I love you, I missed you. Captain. Come with me. Now that you are a member of Constellation, I am at your service. No additional protocols necessary. Also, I love given you. the likelihood that you will be out in unsettled space, it might be beneficial to go over exploration outpost development in case you ever need to build a base for field research. Oh no, we're gonna start that now. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Outpost development, what the heck do you mean? The exploration of an unknown planet can be a major undertaking. By building an outpost, you will be able to construct scanning equipment, resource extractors, and defenses. It is even possible to set up multiple outposts capable of manufacturing, allowing you to build advanced equipment. I remember the building in Fallout 4, I'm gonna be honest, I I barely did anything with that. For some reason, I get so overwhelmed with building mechanics and just the sheer amount of stuff you can do. And then I always forget about like what I did and where my outpost is. When I played No Man's Sky, because it's like infinite and procedurally generated, I would build an outpost and then I'd leave it to, never to return to it ever again. And that was so overwhelming. But since this is more finite, it'll be nice when retracing your steps and remembering where you put something. Sounds useful. I'll try it next time I touch down on a planet. 
The blueprints you need to construct an outpost should already be on your watch. It will automatically connect to any available materials for construction in your ship's cargo. Okay, maybe I should have asked how to know what resources I need. Oh, there's just so much. I'm gonna go back and ask one of these questions to have him further clarify. How do I know if a planet has the resources I need? A planetary scan will reveal the presence of key inorganic resources. Okay. Although rarer elements will be harder to find mm. without training. <gasps> and while a scan oh. may detect the presence of life on a planet, you will have to analyze the native plants and animals yourself to know what compounds they produce. Okay, so I've been doing that as I go, so that's nice. And I feel like the rare materials, that's probably where you'll need those like mining things. You'll need to place something down so that it'll mine it for you. What kind of advanced structures could I build? The scan booster is the most obvious as it will enable you to detect landmarks and other points of interest from further away. Beyond that, extractors will allow you to collect raw materials yes. of various types, while fabricators enable the manufacturing. Gotcha. A particularly prosperous outpost may even warrant the construction of cargo links, allowing you to share resources between other outposts okay. you have built. Oh, and let me guess, the more prosperous the outpost, the more it becomes a target for people like the Crimson Fleet. So then we'll probably need defenses and all that good stuff. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense, but I can tell right now it's going to be very in-depth, very complex, and I'm gonna need to take my time with that. I could use you on my crew, Vasco. Captain, I will proceed to my assigned post. Yay! Um... So Frontier, ooh. Yeah, so we're gonna confirm him to go on the ship. I will accompany you as long as you require. I'll get back to what I was doing. You know where to find me. Ooh, okay. So I think she's assigned to the lodge, so she's gonna stay here. Bye, Sarah, it's been real, it's been fun, but no more judging me, okay? All right, let's get back to what I was doing. Let's go talk to the Vanguard. Oh, here we go. The, oh, so we just have to log into a computer. Oh, that's right. He said the orientation was down below in some room. This is the room. Applicant name, Miranda. Current bounty, zero. Thank goodness. To register for your examination, please select enlistment agreement. Note, any outstanding UC bounty must be paid before... Yep. By joining the United Colonies Vanguard, you agree to perform necessary services for the United Colonies that could place you in serious danger. Sign me up. Resulting in harm to your craft or yourself, up to and including death. You know what they say, you gotta risk it for the biscuit. I, Miranda, agree. Yay! Okay, this is gonna be fun. I'm so excited. Consent documented. You may proceed to the examination chamber through the orientation hall. Okay. Registration accepted. Oh God, Vasco! The historical displays in the orientation hall, or continue on to the examination. Okay, some of the companions in this game need to understand social distancing, cause they be right up my butt crack. Okay, nut to butt, but not now, please. Not now. Maybe when we're in combat. In 2150, humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating. All life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. This is so cool. The Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. Okay. I love the free stars, but this is super cool. I am a sucker for a museum and knowledge. 
And this whole setup already is, is kind of sweet. Yeah. I'm not going to pledge my allegiance to anything yet, but I'm digging this. Okay, so what is this? New factions rise. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. Okay. Yet there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. Okay. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. Ooh. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 21. I know them. Later followed by House Varun, oh. revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. I wonder if that's more the religious organization. I have not met them yet. Oh, but I want to. I freaking want to. I love this. I love this whole museum thing. I am somebody who like needs to have instructions, everything laid out for me piece by piece in chronological order. But this is right up my alley. I'm getting really good lore, a really, really good understanding of the whole world who we're dealing with right now which I didn't really get when I was joining the Free Star. So I just learned about another faction too. <gasps> House of Varun, so that's what they look like? That's kind of cool. Maybe? Yep, Free Star Collective. The Space Cowboys. I don't know how to get that outfit. What the heck? The Free Star Collective was initially founded in 2188 when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. I did like Neon, though. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC medical star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the Collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the Settled System's first intergalactic conflict. The Narion War. Okay, I do remember a little bit about Despite that. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Okay. That is so interesting. I can't wait to learn more about these people because I don't know anything. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varun first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs mm -hmm. of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god. Okay. The Great Serpent. The Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war. The Serpent's Crusade. Okay, yeah, so I'm assuming that all these factions are kind of at odds with each other, which makes me think that we will eventually have to choose one. Oh, I want to do all of it, though. The Serpent's Crusade. Yes. Beginning in 2240, House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their serpent god. Mm. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There finally sued for peace. Select members of House Varun who refused to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their 
classification, a goal of all space. Oh, that is so fascinating. To sue for peace. That kind of feels like an oxymoron. Like normally when you sue someone, that's like the la like the last ditch effort, and it's normally not a not a peaceful thing to do. <laughs> Conflict among the stars. <gasps> oh, don't peek yet, don't peek yet at the cool stuff. Okay. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions. Looks like the Death Star. Than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. So there is bad blood, yep. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nerion Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bioengineered alien creatures. The infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in oh. 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in saving off any further human costs, accepted. The okay. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. Okay, so I feel like this whole walkthrough might be a bit biased, right? Like what we're just listening to, because because listening to that, they made it sound like you know the Free Star Collective put up this human civilization, uh, civilian rather shield, and then it's the way she sound she made that sound was the UC was overcome with the sadness of the loss of all these people and they are the ones that reached out for a peace treaty and all that so i have to remember to stay perfectly neutral in this to see it from both perspectives like it could just be the way that she's talking about this it's kind of like learning history depending on which country you're from depending on where you go to school what country you grew up and lived in your school and your history books might say something very different from our history books. So that's always a really interesting perspective to take on on stuff like this, like wars. Like who, who's, who's right, who's wrong? What were they all fighting for? But I love this with the mech versus the biologically engineered alien animal things. I feel like that's maybe what was kept in some of those cages that we came across when I was doing something where there was all these claw marks on the side. I think that's that's those. Okay, the Battle of Nera, I'm assuming, yes? Yes, that's how you say it. Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the free star planet of Nera. Okay, yes, very biased way to say that. Occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position. Repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks. A nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. Ooh. Yeah. So the way she was describing that, specifically there, you could hear it in the language, like they're kind of painting the Free Star Collective to be, like they kind of have a neutral take on it, but it leans more negative without being outwardly negative. You know what I mean? But I'm assuming these are the mechs, which awesome. Kind of looks like a bigger Vasco. The Terror of Londinian? <gasps> Oh, hell yeah! So Terramorphs can control people's minds. Oh god, I hope not. True. They're gonna invade my mind and be horribly overwhelmed by the amount of thoughts that run through my head every second of every single day. Or they might hear crickets. <laughs> like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. Hey, 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 no need to make it feel bad about itself. No Actually, one knows how they move between planets. 
I wonder well, if this one's dead. Jump or something. Oh, maybe they're interdimensional beings. That's sweet. That's freaky though. The design of that thing. Awesome sauce. Okay, let's check this one out. In the midst of a colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort. Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. Right here. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds. Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. Oh my god, this is yeah, so Sarah cool. Here. A real terramorph. I was freaky. It's freaky. But that was really cool. I almost feel like, especially if you're new to these kind of games, because this is one of the first faction side quests you can run into and you can do right away if you want to. I feel like this is a great first stepping stone. And I almost wish I would have gone with this first because this would have given me such a wonderful immediate background lesson on everything in the universe. So, like all the different factions, all of the conflicts that happened. So yeah, I would I would definitely recommend for new players to maybe do this this mission first because that was very valuable. That opened my eyes too. So it makes me wonder if later on in the story, maybe we're gonna end up getting into this giant battle again with all the factions and then these guys are gonna come in and it's gonna be one giant party. The Armistice. Okay, let's do this one. After the devastation wrought by the Colony War, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away accessible only in cases of dire emergency. Mm -hmm. But the Collective had another demand, that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies in the interest of peace and galactic security agreed. In 2311, three United Colony senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. Wow, wait. So did they kind of give themselves up for peace? But again, you kind of hear it in, in the language, the way she's talking about this, it's kind of making it feel like the UC is being set up as this peaceful entity that really strived to make peace with everything that was going on. So just very interesting. I'm really trying to keep that in mind. Okay. The Vanguard is born high. Yes, hello? Oh, sweet. Woo! Oh, sorry, DJ Roomba. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. That could be nice. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. You know, 
she is making this sound really fun. Mmm. I'm easily influenced though, okay? See, they do look at that outfit. Do look at that outfit, that is kind of sick. I want that armor set. Ah, the United Colony is citizen. Yeah, so what does becoming a citizen entail? What kind of perks do you get? Maybe we'll get our answer here. No one is born a United Colony citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn oh. citizenship. But the UC prides itself on taking care of its people. I like that. Most of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. All right. <laughs> All citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. New Atlantis? By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here in the heart of galactic civilization. Okay. As a citizen of the United Colonies. All right, they're convincing me. They're making some really strong points for joining them. Woo, okay, let's do it. Also, because this kind of feels like I'm walking into a, a theme park ride, like this is so fun. Plus, I have gotten so much more education from just walking through this entire museum. Ooh, we got more. Ooh, we got more. These look like ships. Welcome, applicant, to the piloting simulation chamber. Oh no. Enter the designated simulation pod to initiate your exam. Oh god, they're, oh god, they're gonna test my driving skills. All right, well, let me just bow out already. <laughs> Hi there, sir. Do I have to talk to you first, or can I just go straight and let's talk to you first? Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can oh. head in whenever you're ready. Cool. <laughs> Got any advice on how to do well in there? We're just going right for that. <laughs> well, I can't answer that Give me all the answers. Directly. I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. Okay, that's kind of sweet. Piloting isn't my area of expertise. How about you just mark me down as a pass and I head out? <laughs> Vanguard assignments can often include both space and ground combat. <laughs> oh. It'd be bad for both you and the United Colonies to not ensure you're adept in both capacities before sending you out on your first real assignment. Yo, thank you for not getting mad at me for, for asking that question. I, I respect that. That was a great answer. I feel good about that. I feel very confident. Famous last words, watch. 18 flight simulation chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. Cool. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. Oh, you hell must yeah. defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. Look at all that. Can we just go? I'm just gonna reallocate some sort resources here. Your target's active. Oh, let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Ah! Hold on, I'm not done yet! Stop it! Dude, I'm OP. Show you my skills. Look at that. Zippity zapping them. Nice. Targets eliminated. Progress recorded. Tier 1 reached. Initiating Tier 2. Bring it on. New targets active. There they are. Okay. My shields are doing their job. That's good. That's good to know. Nice. And actually, I relearned this when I was editing my own videos, but lasers are really effective against shields. And then once the shields are down, use ballistics and missiles to really hurt them. Just like that. All targets eliminated. Progress recorded. Tier 2 reached. Initiating Tier 3. It 
is kind of interesting to me, the specifics that you can miss the first time around. Your target's active. Come on, baby. Let's go, let's go. Bring them shields down. Bring them shields down. Boom. Yes. Oh, you're not getting away from me so easy. Yeah. Love it. This ship is slow, though. Oh, my goodness. Slow to turn. Okay, okay let's go. All right, there you are. Oh, come on. Nice shields down. All targets. They're like, wow, this person's a professional. Tier three reached. Congratulations, applicant. You've defeated sufficient opponents to pass the exam. You may now exit the simulator through the hatch to record your current score. A pass. Stay and try your hand at the remaining tiers. No, thank you. Let's be done. Oh. Wait, wait, how do I get out of here? Resuming the examination. No, 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 no. No! No, I want to be done! I don't remember how he said to- ah, No! At this point, kill me. You'd be doing me a favor. Where is the exit hatch, though, dude? Buddy. Oh! And to press B. Like, B for back out. Yep. Not my brightest moment. <laughs> Oh, that was rough, though. Get me the heck out of here. I hope they still recorded my passing score. Applicant. Thank you. You've passed. Oh, thank goodness. That's all I care about. To receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd nope. like to try and earn a better score. We'll only nope. keep your best run. I'm good. I'm out. Ooh. Only those on official United Colonies business can access the building. Okay, then. Hi, Commander Tuala. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? I really like him. There's just something about him. He's very friendly. I'm curious, how long have you been with the Vanguard, Commander? Me? Six? Seven years now? Oh, dang. Was a recon squad commander in a former life. So it wasn't too big a jump bossing around foreign pilots instead. <laughs> but Vanguard's been a quality assignment. Meet new people, judge them on a series of diverse criteria, Get them out there helping people who need it. Cool. All right, when do I get started? I wrapped up my piloting exam and they told me to come back here. And I passed. Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? No. Uh, sir, yes, sir? I like the fire, applicant. Let's get into it. Yay. So, looking at the data, hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? A test of preparation. And thoroughness. Two traits the Vanguard values highly. Okay. Psychological results are all within expected levels. <laughs> Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Tier 4. Not too shabby. Thanks. The techs make us test each level of the sim, too. I can tell you that wave are some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Thanks, bud. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... 10 years service. Pretty standard for combat assignments. But your performance in the simulator does mean I can offer a signing bonus. Help convince you to join the cause. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? Sure, but... Ah, uh, now I'm a little sketched out by the whole 10-year rule. Can we do this under the table? I like to operate independently. I kind of want to say that. You're not in the Freestar Collective here. Vanguard keeps its work above board. 
You want in? You have to do oh. the same as everyone else. And that starts with the oath. Okay, that may, you know, that makes sense. I do agree with that. You know, if everyone's got to do it, it makes sense that I should do it too. But I just don't want to lock myself into this faction. Because maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe I'm doing this and I'm like, nah, I prefer the Freestar Collective a little bit more. I'm ready though. Fantastic. Okay. Then just follow me. I want to do the probationary mission. I hope there's combat involved. Oh, so we're here. Hello. Wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the skies. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. <gasps> that is like where it. we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities, and to uphold the values of the Vanguard Honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? I do. <laughs> then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. Hell yeah, let's do it. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plan on Tau Ceti 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. Okay. So, can the people of Tau Ceti 2 count on you? Yes. Let's do this. That's the spirit. <laughs> Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Cool. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. <laughs> Supra et Ultra. Oh, I love that. Getting it in advance. Disregard. I attempted an informal greeting, but I am dissatisfied with the results. Absolutely. Oh, is this that person that we have to talk to? Huh. Oh, that's right, Harris. Hello. Ah. You are new probationary then? I am. Chief Herat, pleasure to be working with you. It's my job to make sure all you rocket jockeys are ready for anything that comes at you up there. <laughs> now, Manifest says we're fitting you out with one comms repair suite. In addition to the standard issue welcome kit all probationary pilots get for their first mission. Med packs, some small arms, couple mm. spare ship parts, all the essentials in case of any surprises up there. My people will have everything on your ship before you lift off. Won't even know they were there. Hmm. Mm. So, paying a visit to the people of scenic Tau Ceti 2. Nice easy one for your first job. Just keep your head on swivel and you'll come home safe. Any questions before you head out? No, this sounds fun. And I love that they prepare you going in. Like, you get some arms. I think it sounds like you're going to get a suit. I think I'm all set. Then I won't keep you. Make us look good out there, recruit. Will do. All right. We just go up, or where are we going? Oh, we gotta go that way? Oh, good, duh, because that's my ship. Here we are. Tau Ceti 2. Let's open the planet map. Gourmet Production Center. Abandoned mine. <gasps> oh, oh, we have to come here anyway to find Andreja. But let's do this first. Oh, that's nice. This is a pretty planet, too. Lots of water. Kind of looks like Earth a little bit. Let's land. Oh my god, that scared me. That was loud and very intense. I'm awake. I am most definitely awake now. More rain here. Wonderful. What are we gonna find here? Seems like there was a battle, but uh, with something very large and with claws. Hmm. Awesome. Great. Raisin Bran cereal. No, thank you. Not ever. Raisins suck. And I will take that to my grave. Pruning little nasties. Let's do some looting real quick. Ooh, that's right. Ooh, this is a fun room. 
There's quite a few goodies downstairs. I wonder what's up here. Chunks! <laughs> Beef chunks. Oh no, this guy, he overdosed on a juice box! <laughs> Beware, kids, of the juice boxes. That's hilarious. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we were resuscitating him for a second. All right, I think we're good to go for now. Is there anything else I want to check out? I can't really see anything. I love the thunder sounds. Ooh. I want a good thunderstorm. Whoops. Ah. Oh, that was terrifying. Um, absolutely not. I did not like how that sounded. Not one bit. Oh my gosh, we reloaded, we're good. Okay, I'm very scared. Either I got hit harder than I thought, or you've got some incredible timing. Regardless, I think it knows you're here. I'll unlock it. the door. Second floor, main building. But be quiet. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. Is this gonna be the death claw equivalent? You just get slapped once and insta dead. Yeah, I don't even want to fart around here at all. We're just gonna get inside. Safety. Safety? Hello, hi. Hi, I want this med pack first. Dibs. Mine. Yep. More dibs. Ooh, mine too. Oh my gosh. I am so low on ammo. I think I have been sleeping on the melee weapons in this game. Butter, cheese, yes please, that rhymed. Yeah, because I am consistently running out of ammo. Okay, let's let's chat. So what do we got here? It's too clean to be one of the settlers or a pirate. You see on patrol maybe? Yeah, make my day if you said you were a shock trooper out for a stroll. Well, first off, thank you for noticing my hygiene. Secondly, the Vanguard sent me, though they failed to mention how bad things were. Vanguard, huh? Yeah, I expect they didn't. Mm. I'm Hadrian. Mm -hmm. I'm a... I was a researcher with the UC. Was? I, I came here on a rumor of a... Well, I expect you saw the results on your way in. Yes. What's left of the settlers? The work of Oxisio Machina. A terramorph. One of the nastiest aliens humanity's ever crossed paths with. <laughs> and this one, well, it's something of an anomaly. Possibly a worrying one. Oh, great. So are we going to see one for the first time? What kind of anomaly are we talking here? Terramorphs have a unique growth cycle. They're usually only found on worlds that have been long colonized by humanity. But Tao said he's too young to have one. Yet here it is. I came looking for an explanation and found all this. That's interesting. So humans draw them out? Sounds like you could use my help then. <laughs> I sure could. Because to confirm my suspicions about this creature, I'm going to need a tissue sample from it. <laughs> and to get that, I need its corpse. That sounds like a you problem. <laughs> but there is a way we can give ourselves an edge against this thing. The plant security system. The admin terminal's here in this building, but it needs its connection reset. And as I found out, that's not a one-person job. Okay. But if you can make it to the security outpost and restore the connection, I think I can get things back online. See if the settlers left us any other tools. Notice how she said, if you can make it. I don't have any follow-up questions for this, so all right, let's get that security system back online. Good. Once I see the connection reset, I'll get things underway on my end. Cool. Take care of yourself out there. Uh, and make sure you leave enough of that thing for us to get a sample. Ooh, if it doesn't eat me first. Okay, so go in that general direction. Let's do it. Ooh, I hope there's some goodies along the way making it worth my while. I don't want... Wait a second. Yes, I do want to go up here. Oh, 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 loot. Let's go. Oh, it's a master lock. You're kidding. Expert lock. Fudge. Well, there's not a lot going on up here that I can get to. Okay. Um, instead of going outside, I'm actually kind of scared to go outside. So I want to see if maybe there's more loot that can be had. Ooh, hello. Hi. 
Yes. Oh, it's the garbage room. Ooh, sandwich. Ugh. It's got another bite taken out of it. I finally have more skill points to invest. And I think I finally want to invest in the boost pack. Specialized training and innovations in personal mobility systems have allowed for unfettered exploration on alien worlds. You can now utilize boost packs. Yes, please. Now, how the heck do I do it? Oh, so for the next rank, I have to boost jump 10 times while in combat. All right. So the next question is, do we want to use this last skill for something else? This was kind of a hard decision to make, but I read through most of them that I have available right now. And I think I want to invest in more healing. So med packs, trauma packs, and emergency kits restore 10% additional health 10 times or 10% faster. So yeah, because I know for me with my like, alienage <laughs> my half human half alien background i take i actually take less healing unfortunately so maybe this can make up for that difference a little bit so i think i'm gonna unlock this i'm hoping it helps i don't see why it wouldn't help man knowing what to invest in is always one of the harder things to do especially so early in the game everything in here is higher level locks Right, let's go out this way. Actually, let's keep passing through buildings. More chances for loot, right? Oh, what is that sound? All right, uh, what is it? Oh, oh, was I in there? Maybe there's gotta be a way around. Ah, here we go. Oh, it's really dark in here. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Good enough, pancakes plus. My Canadian ancestors would be so proud. Let's search in here really fast before we do anything. Shotgun cell, thank you very much. Ooh! I might have to pick this up and do melee just in case. I need to have a backup for when I inevitably run out of ammo. Okay, let's go activate whatever this is. Okay. Multiple warnings received. Please select an option from the list below. Uh, I think we wanted to do the security system connection status. And reset. There we go. So I think that's it. Connection restored. Awesome. I'll make this quick. Hmm. Plant's turrets took a beating. But I should be able to get you a couple of kill lanes. Just get the thing to chase you down the alleys between the buildings, and you'll lead it right into a crossfire. Oh. Hello? No. I wish I'd found this earlier. You notice those sensors around the facility? Part These of a things? stop tracking system should let you keep tabs on how close the Terramorph is. It's not connected to this network. I don't know what you just said. There should be a terminal in the adjoining room. Tune it to 183.5. 183.5, that's my favorite radio station! <laughs> 183.5, right? Okay, system status. Turn on tracking system. Frequency tuning is required for proper tracking. Okay. Uh, what was it? Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. I don't even remember the number now. One eight three point one one eight three point three. I think it was this one. Oh, okay, I was right. Target detected. Connecting playback to user. Uh, okay, I think that's it. We're good. Backing out. Trackers reading green. What's that sound? No. 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 Shit. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and get in cover. It's what the move. And I wouldn't I bow out. If you could avoid it. The kill lanes. They're set up but need power. There's breakers on each of the buildings you can throw to get them live. Once they're online, lead the Terramorph towards the lights and watch the fireworks. Give it hell, Vanguard. Okay, no, 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 no. I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for this. Thank God they gave me an advance. This is crap. Turns it's bloody thing on. System rearm failed. Additional power required. Oh, shut your pie hole. Oh, no. F that, F that with everything that I have. <laughs> That's all you, Vasco. <laughs> huh. Here I 
I'm throwing my friends under the bus. Bye, 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 bye. Oh, so does it beep? Harder, what the? F Hell no. Hell no. Oh my god, it's fucking in there. It's in there. Sorry, neighbors. I hope they can't hear me. Ah, I feel bad. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Okay, yep, bye. Bye, bye, bye. As I believe the Backstreet Boys once said, bye, 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 bye. I don't want to be a fool for you. Even though I'm totally a fool for doing this damn mission. <laughs> How the hell do I get up there? Fosco, I'm praying for you, buddy. Thank you so much for being you and helping me out here. I am terrified. How do I use my jetpack? Oh, I found it. Oh, but it doesn't go up very high. Wait a second. So is the next one all the way back here? I thought I did this one already. Did it destroy it? I'm so confused. Oh, is it dead? Oh, yeah, that's right in your face. Uh, boom. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big talker. You got nothing to show for it. Here we go. I hope this was worth the effort. <laughs> oh, oh, whoops, sorry. I'm just a little excited. tracker has gone quiet. I suspect it's, it's either dead. hiding or... It's dead. Wait. You did it, didn't you? I did do- I did nothing. Essence above, you just flatlined a terror morph! Nope. It was not me. I do not deserve this praise. Yup, all taken care of thanks to me. <laughs> oh yeah, taken care of. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't happen to grab me a tissue sample, did you? I did. I also need a tissue from all the crying that I just did. Cause we're taking care of business every day. Taking care of business. Yeah, here you go. All right. I spotted a microscope <sighs> downstairs. Let's see if we can't get to the bottom of this. Mm. The only thing I want to see the bottom of right now is a drink bottle. <laughs> I mean, juice. <laughs> All right, Hadrian, let's go. Oh, is she gonna do something with this? Model. Let's see what you can do. Running basic diagnostics? Nothing. Maybe a flag scan? No. Spectrograph. Damn. Damn. Damn, damn. This equipment, it's not set up to do a proper analysis of our sample. Yeah. But this terramorph being here, of all places, it doesn't make sense. Humanity's spread plenty of creatures in our travels across the stars. Pets, livestock, pests. But terramorphs? They're different. To our knowledge, no one's ever spread them intentionally. Yet somehow, they follow us. So when humans settle a world, 70 to 100 years later, terramorphs tend to just appear. No one knows how or why. Dangerous, but at least predictable. Talcetti, though, it's too young to have a native population. It's only been colonized 20 years. But then the other option, that someone captured one of the deadliest predators in the galaxy just to wipe out some settlers minding their own business? That seems awfully implausible. Which means, we're either looking at a truly strange murder, or a faster type of terramorph growth, the results of which could be catastrophic. Terramorph outbreaks have taken down far bigger colonies than this one. Well, that is all lovely. That is all great news, whichever way you spin it. But this storyline is already so so much more compelling in my opinion compared to the Freestar Collective. It's been fun so far, but this is like just right into the action immediately. But it sounds like someone might have set all of this up. Terramors have taken down other colonies? They have. They even took down an entire city once. That's right. A place Lindinian. called Londinian had to be quarantined due to a massive I learned that in school. colony war. It's the only known loss of that scale, but it's the reason why any change in our relationship with these creatures needs to be taken very seriously. 
Okay. How does no one know how terramorphs got into human worlds? Aren't they kind of hard to miss? Well, they're not exactly buying tickets and flying coach. <laughs> Fair enough. The theory is that they're spread by some kind of egg or seed that's able to evade our detection. But how the hell an undetectable egg turns into a terramorph without anyone noticing is a question no one's ever found an answer to. And it's why what's happened here could be real bad news for the rest of human civilization. Maybe it's like Alien, where it takes on a host of some kind, like a human, it embeds itself in its stomach, and then grows, and then explodes out of their body. Sounds like we need to do something quick. You're right. Yeah. We just need more information first. Time was, I had access to one of the best repositories of Terramorph research in the galaxy. Seems a natural place to start looking, if I can figure how to access it. But we also need to get this sample properly analyzed, get confirmation on just how concerned we should be. Luckily, I think I know just the person to help with the sample. What would you say to delivering this to him for me? I yeah, I'd do, do that. it myself, but I need to call in some favors, see if I can't get access to that Terramorph data. <sighs> Plus, maybe just pop by a hospital for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Clear sounds with your good. Commander first, if you have to. You can even show them this. My gene tag. Tell them Hadrian Sanan is worried there could be more attacks on the horizon. They should recognize the name. Well, okay then. Anything to get me off of this planet. Don't worry, I'll make sure my commander agrees. Oh, you don't understand what a weight off my shoulders that is. I need Dr. Percival Walker to put together a sample analysis for this thing. Full workup. He'll know what that means. Okay. I'm not sure exactly where to find him, but last I heard he was contracting with the Trade Authority on Mars. There's a place called the Sixth Circle in Sidonia. A bar run by some old friends. I'll meet you and Percival there. And here. It's not a lot, but... Money! You've definitely earned it. Should cover the cost of fuel to Mars, at least. Why, thank you. Now, please, go check in with your commander. We need to know what we're dealing with. Ooh, 1800. Let's go. I think we've been to that bar already, too. So it'll be nice to return. Let's check out the map, though, huh? Unknown? Unknown. So you know the cool thing about this. If you bring up your scanner, and then you scan... It's, it'll tell you exactly what this point of interest is. So this is natural. And then what is this? Unknown. Life signs. Ooh. I kind of want to go up there if I can reach it. That is... Oh. Do we want to mountain climb right now? I do want to try to go get it, though. Now that I got a boost pack, maybe it's... Maybe it's possible. Wow. Okay, so we finally made it to, like, the peak of the mountain, I guess. It it was definitely difficult getting up here. <gasps> Woo! What? Hunting? Is it hunting me? Better not be. We're just gonna start shooting. Ask questions later. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh! All right. So that was fun. But yeah, the boost pack is really nice when you're just walking and traveling, especially especially if you're just running and then all of a sudden, woo! Gives you a nice little boost. Yes, love it. Great investment. So glad I did that. I think what we are coming to is over here. Scan. Nice. This was... <gasps> what the f... Yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. oh, they're kind of cool. Okay, so they're not trying to eat me. That's very, very, very nice. I like that a lot. Very happy about that. And then this is a plant, I'm assuming. Yes. Ooh. Wow, okay. All right, how cool. So yeah, for anyone wondering, there's tons of, well, I don't, animals. I don't know if that's the right word for them, but like alien <laughs> animals. And I figured since we're still here, we're not too far off. Ooh, crystal crater. Yeah, we wanted to check out this natural 
outpost thing, see what was here. So these things will try to kill me, right? Oh yeah, there it is. I got you, Bosco. Yeah, yeah. 25% scanned. They automatically s ah. Okay, good. Scan the big jumping ah, ah. No, no, Bosco. Hello, help. Oh, you didn't even need my help. Let's go. Cool. Iron, chlorine. I don't know if I'm gonna need those, but can't hurt to pick it up, all right? I know there was another one around here. Ooh, wait a second, something's moving. This is another brand new. Oh God, oh God, no, I'm, I, I come in peace. I come in peace, I come in peace. I just wanted to scan your ass. I did it, oh shoot. Oh my God, the whole family's coming. The whole family's here, he just chomped. He just chomped me. I hope I taste good, okay? Ay, 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 63%, okay. Well, I got what I came for. I don't want to kill the wildlife. Oh my good gracious. No, 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 I, no. I don't want to hurt them. Oh, ooh, there's more up here. I want to finish scanning them. They're hurting. Hello, guys. I'm just scanning. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Poke. Poking and prodding. It's fine, guys. You're good. Oh, 100%. Let's go. All right. Let's GTFO. I'm out. Um, yes, Commander Twala. I would like to discuss with you how kind it was for you to send me to my death. Look who's back. All set with that probationary mission? We can do your debrief and formally welcome you into the Vanguard whenever you're ready. Wow, no options to call his ass out. I need your permission to deliver a terramorph tissue sample to Mars. A terror? What? Yeah. How did you walk away with the terramorph tissue sample running comms repairs? What happened to the settlers? A great question. Things didn't go as advertised. Only one alive was a researcher who gave me a sample and a gene tag. A gene tag? Let me see that. Hmm, Sanan. I know that name. Let me check the database. Huh. A lot of this data has been classified. Here we go. Service mm -hmm. record. Wow. That's a lot of commendations. Seems like she served with distinction as co-head of a UC Xeno Weapons Division. Faced tribunal at the end of the colony war. It was dismissed from duty. Guess that's why I'd heard the name before. If she's former Xeno Warfare, though, well, we can at least be sure she knows her aliens. Yay! What the heck is Xeno Warfare? In the run-up to the colony war, the UC started a program with a singular goal. Find the deadliest, most terrifying aliens in the galaxy. They did it. Have them fight on the side of the UC. Never saw any of the deployments myself, but the program was clearly enough of a success that when the war came to an end 20 years ago, both sides agreed to have the practice banned. Good. At this point, I presume, this tribunal decided to cut Sinan loose. Yeah, Xeno Warfare does not sound good. I'm sure she doesn't list it at the top of her resume. But considering her service record and her area of expertise, I'm not seeing a reason to think this request is anything other than genuine. Did your survivor, Hadrian, did she mention why she thinks this sample is so special? She's afraid there could be more attacks like the one that wiped out the people of Tau Ceti. She thinks there could be more of these? Possibly. This uh, has been one of the more surprising debriefs I've ever been a part of. I did actually have another mission lined up for you. Supporting UC system defense against the Crimson Fleet. Ooh! Now I guess you have two options on how to proceed. Head to the UC Vigilance and help out SysDef, or deliver that sample. I'll make sure you've got the proper clearances for either path. Hell yeah! Consider these your first official orders. And here, so everyone knows you're working with the Vanguard. Dude! Welcome to the Navy, Captain. Thank Vanguard's you. Vanguard's also got some custom ship modifications. You'll be cleared for access to them next time you're down at the spaceport. Talk to ship services. Now, if there wasn't anything else, I suggest you move out. Oh man, so now we have two options for what we can do next. 
so it looks like we have Delivering Devils, which Hadrian has asked me to find her colleague, Percival Walker, on Mars. Percival was recently working on the Trade Authority there, so that seems like a natural place to check first. Or we have Deep Cover. <gasps> Ooh, Commander Twala of the UC Vanguard has provided me with an assignment. I am to report to the UC Vigilance and speak to Commander Kibwe Ikande for the details. So, oh, both of them sound fun because I do want to follow up on what we just did and continue to learn like, what the heck is happening. But I like anything to do with the Crimson Fleet because I know that whatever I do, I'm going to go, I'm going to get into some trouble. It's going to be a fun freaking time. But whatever we decide to do, I think I'm going to save it for next time. Thank you guys so much for watching this really, really fun and awesome episode for Starfield. I just feel like there was so much information that was given to us. I love the fact that we started off with the, not walk down memory lane per se, because they're not my memories, but it was pretty much an entire class on what is going on in this world. Who are the factions? What happened between them? And it answered a lot of questions that I had about this game. Like I said, when I was going through all of this, that is a quest line that I wish I would have started a lot earlier before I did any of the free star missions. But anyway, I'm glad we're getting to it right now. The Terra Morph was uh, adequately named, terrifying. So far, the UC quests are very fun, very interesting, and I find them really compelling. I'm kind of liking this faction a little bit. I have seen so much more action from doing this faction quest line than I did when I started doing the Freestar Collective ones. And you guys know how much I love chaos. So I think going forward, I'm definitely going to continue with the Vanguard. As always, I would love to know your thoughts on this game down below in the comments. What do you think? Who's your favorite faction so far? Have you only done one? one of them? Who's your favorite companion so far? And yes, I am kind of happy that I switched Sarah out for Vasco. But the one thing that's kind of interesting for me, I did kind of miss the feeling that I got traveling with Sarah. There is something to be said about traveling with a human companion versus a robot. I think there is a different level of emotion and dimension that kind of comes along with traveling with a human being. I felt that she gave a lot more input to what was going on as well. So I don't know, I do like traveling with Vasco because I feel like he's really OP and just a really good companion to have coming along on quest lines, especially if they tend to be more difficult. But I do like the side conversations that come along with traveling with a human. So I don't know, I'm gonna give it some more thought and you know, there's so many more characters that we can and travel with as well. I'm not gonna limit myself to any one person, you know, we gotta get a feel for everybody. But thank you guys so much again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button to get notified for the next one. I love the bright pink that we got going on in here. It definitely fed into the good vibes and video games today. All right, with all that being said, I'm gonna let you guys go. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.